today I want to share with you a journey which I enjoyed a lot and still do. Today I want to share with you the journey of a robotic startup. So you might think, what the hell does this baby tricycle have to do with a robotic startup? Well, I promise you that it will become more clear during this talk. So, who knows how this thing is called? Just raise your hand or shout. Nobody? It's called a velocipede, and it's already used since the early 19th century. A marvelous piece of technology, if you ask me. But what amazes me even more is that we already have railways since 600 before Christ. They were invented by the ancient Greek, and they are called rutways. Clever guys, those Greek. So, let's go back to today. Currently, we are at the beginning of the fourth industrial revolution. And just try to imagine all the things mankind has invented over the last century. Things like electricity, or computers, or the internet. All incredible technologies. So you would expect that transportation has seen similar progress since the invention of the railways, 600 before Christ. Well, let's have a look at today's solutions in transportation inside warehouses. Hmm, I see some similarities with the roadways. Not much of an innovation in 2500 years time, if you ask me. Well, you don't have to propel this thing by hand anymore. But there is still is a rails. And that rails is a form of infrastructure. So you might think, what the hell is wrong with infrastructure? Well, for one, it's really costly. But on the other hand, what if you want to drive to an arbitrary location inside a warehouse with this thing? Or even worse, if you want to go to the outside, to a parked truck, for example, that's simply not possible. My name is Willem Jan Lamers, and I'm an entrepreneur with an engineering background. And what do you think that engineers do all day? Well, I will tell you a little secret. They make graphs, because engineers love to make graphs. So that's just what I did. And I call this the mood graph. And more specifically, it depicts the mood you experience during your work. And you might recognize it. For example, do you feel, uh, feel sometimes a little bit depressed when it's rainy weather outside, just like today? Or do you feel excited when you go on holiday? Or even better, do you feel relieved when that annoying colleague finally changes his job? I see some people think, well, yeah, maybe. <coughs> well, we all have our mood swings, right? Let's have a look at the mood curve I've gone through during the journey of a robotic startup. It started back in 2008, directly after my graduation. I got the opportunity to start at least at a half a dozen cool companies, but not the one I admired most, a famous Formula One team. And maybe I should have prepared better for the interview, or maybe I was just too nervous because of this intimidating underground hallway. I don't know. So I chose my second best option, working at the advanced technology department of a large truck manufacturer. A really cool job. But after a few months, when the house plans needed to be removed from the office due to cost savings, things changed. The financial crisis hit Europe. And being a corporate env environment, Motivation of the people sunk, and the politics became more and more present. So at one day, the department manager uh, gave me two options. One was to do uh, an external assignment, subsidized assignment, and the other one was to quit. Well, that's basically no option, and I had one weekend to decide. So on Monday morning, I went to the department manager with a sweat on my forehead, and I said to him, I quit. I'm going to start my own company. And he obviously didn't expect that. So he said to me, you must be nuts. We're in the middle of a financial crisis. Well, that's true, but I still did. And I started my first company. Initially, I provided engineering services for the automotive development market. And later, I added products like measurement systems and sensors. This was a really cool time. And it became even better when I met two volunteers that are now helping me out with things. <coughs> My daughters, Sonna and Tessa. 
And this summer, they were helping me with testing. Well, I think not many children can say they can play with a 20,000 euro robot. But that's a completely different story. So, this was back in 2012. And at that time, I needed to do a very difficult measurement on a passenger car to validate my simulation models. I needed to measure the sideways slip of a car. And that requires very expensive equipment. So, inspired by the happy moments with my children, I decided to see if I could come up with a low-cost version of such a sensor myself. So, at one day, I was playing around with my computer mouse. And I came up with a brilliant ID. And here you see a prototype of it, mounted to the side of a car. And just like the computer mouse, this device can measure the sideways slip of a car. Well, this was back in 2012. And looking back now, this was the eureka moment in this journey. So, after some more testing, someone asked me, can the technology behind this sensor also be used to position a self-driving robot to feed animals? Something like this. And I said to him, no, of course not. This technology has nothing to do with determining the position of a robot. But the idea of using this sensor to position a robot kept me busy. So I gave it some more thinking. I made several modifications to the sensor and I came up with a new design. This one. And then I needed something to test it with. But of course, I couldn't afford to buy a robot. So, what do you do then? You steal the toys of your children. <laughs> I hope they can forgive me one day for doing that. And you probably now understand the relation between this baby tricycle and a robotic startup a bit more. Anyway, in the end, I proved that the technology could indeed be used to position a robot. And together with two other guys, we founded a new robotics company, we gathered some funding, we did market research, and we built a new prototype. But unfortunately, it didn't work out. And after several years of blood, sweat, and tears, we finally managed. We proved that the technology could be working. The only problem was that, well, the prototype may have become a little bit bigger than we hoped. So we call this one the beast. So by now, you may be wonder, what the hell does it do then? And how does this work? Well, basically, you can say that the sensors replace the ancient Greek railways. They remove the infrastructure that is needed to position a robot. And here you can see it. The two things on top are the sensors. And even if the robot is disturbed from its path, the virtual railway, so to say, the sensors are still able to determine the position of the robot. Cool, eh? So, what these sensors do, they analyze the ground surface using really clever artificial uh, intelligence algorithms. And that way, it is possible to determine the position of a robot with respect to its environment without the need of any additional infrastructure. Well, this all started out as a simple idea, but of course, there is much more to it than that. And early last year, we saw the need to speed things up. So we participated in a business accelerator program. And this was definitely the most intense and challenging period in my professional life. We learned so much. And at the beginning, we saw the tremendous potential that the technology actually has. It can, can be used in so many applications. But uh, when talking with potential customers, we realized that we are not doing the right things. Developing a complete robot didn't make sense. So we decided to focus on the one thing that's so special, the positioning technology. And instead of building robots, we now develop positioning sensors. And instead of going after the agricultural market, we now focus on a much larger one, the logistics and the industrial automation markets. But at that time, things were still a bit uncertain. For example, how do you know if your product is unique? And at that time, I spoke to a professor from Belgium, and I explained to, uh, to him about our technology. So I said to him, uh, unlike other technologies, ours can be used in highly dynamic environments. So in situations where there are a lot of moving people or goods like uh, pallets, and that can be integrated into a robot really easily. And best of all, that you can go wherever you want. You are not limited to fixed paths anymore. And that's all because 
the technology is fully infrastructure free. So the professor said, I don't believe you. I don't believe you. This is the holy grail of indoor positioning technology. And at that moment, I knew we have something special, something truly unique. This was the second very important moment in this journey. We have it. But things don't turn out and not everything goes as well as you want it to go. So then you have to zoom out, see what's going on. So we did. And what we saw, we saw an incredible technology. And that we were in the hot robotics market that grows with more than 12% every year. And that there is tremendous potential for future applications. We were on the right track, I thought. But unfortunately, also bad things happen, especially when you're under extreme pressure. My two co-founders eventually decided to leave the company, mainly because they couldn't handle the fast changes and iterations, but also because they wanted to continue their existing businesses. So in the end, we had to make a drastic decision to split up, and I felt abandoned. But you need to carry on. And soon after that moment, we signed a deal with our launching customer. Victory, real validation of our business model and our technology. So you might notice I said we. And that's because in the beginning of the business accelerator, I hired a guy called Vincent to support us. And one thing I knew for sure is that we were on the same page with things. So afterwards, I asked him to join the company and become my business partner. And luckily, he did. And soon after that, we also got funded. And since that time, we are in the fast lane. We moved our office to Venlo, we hired our first employee, and now we have a team of five great people. And soon, we will be doing pilot projects with our customers. And after a long and hard struggle, there's also a moment to be proud of. Today is a special day for us, because today I will introduce to you, for the first time in public, our next generation product. And here it is. This is our sensor, and we gave it the name Jupiter. This device will soon make all these old technologies redundant. I like to see it as an evolution from railways to high tech. And just imagine all the possibilities. Well, nobody can predict the future, but just imagine when my children will order their first product on the internet that the whole delivery process will be automated by robots. From the shelves in the warehouse to the front door. As you have seen, the journey of a robotic startup is definitely not guided by a straight railway. It's much more like a roller coaster. There are ups and downs, and they can be huge. So if you wake up tomorrow and you have a great idea for a startup, I would say, just go for it. Start tomorrow because in the end, the roller coaster is what makes the fun. Thank you. <laughs>